Good morning, dear saints, dear brethren, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your, oh yeah, he's got two of them out today. <laughs> yes, I do. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at and considering today. Be a Berean and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Be a Berean. Don't trust what I say. What we're about here is about what the scripture saith. That's what we're about here. Okay? I say we because this is not mine. I say we because the spirits identify. Okay? This is not my ministry. God forbid. If it were mine, I'd be dead already. If it were mine, I would not be in it. This is not my ministry. And see, people wanting to justify themselves and stuff like that. They, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> Today is the 16th. You know, I gotta say, it's difficult for me to just read the Proverbs without any exposition on the verses that are being read. Some of you are aware of what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to just read it without, you know, giving references or adding commentary. That, and that's, you know, if, you, if I take my time, you know, don't make any errors, that's great. Like I said, there are some of you saints who know what I'm talking about. But it, it's hard to just simply read the scripture and not give to expound on certain verses, to not give a commentary, not to make a reference, okay? That, that's difficult for me to do without adding that kind of, you know, commentary, scripture with scripture. Like I said, there are those of you who know what, what I'm referring to. Um, I'm doing that basically because I've always wanted personally to read a proverb a day publicly. Uh, and right away, too, in doing that, I, right away in my mind, I think of our beloved brother Jeff, who, uh, who, who has now uh, been relegated to a chair, which looks like a hot rod, brother. That's, that's traveling in style. Whenever I see someone in a, a mobilized chair or something like that, um, I always say to him, it's like, hey, man, that, that, now you're traveling in style. Look at me, I got to, you know, huff and puff. You you get to. <laughs> but uh, I think of that, uh, think of our dear brother in respects that physically unable to read the scriptures. He can read, of course, but so. But uh, anyway, Proverbs 16, verses 1 and verse 9. I don't know what this is going to be called, but we are going to be scripturally addressing 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18, and we're going to have some expository today. That's why I got two sets of scriptures, okay? This is a milk topic, but it's, um, it's meat that's going to be washed down with some milk, Okay? Read along with me. If you got a ribbon marker, uh, today would be the day when you're going to need it because we're going to be referencing to and fro doing Scripture with Scripture. But let's begin. Proverbs 16, verses 1 on verse 9. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Verse 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the lowercase s spirits. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient, are they? Mm. 
we, even as saints, when we're going to engage in something that we know we shouldn't, there's no justifying it. There is no justifying it for a saint. A saint can kind of dabble in it, but sooner or later the justifications go. They do. And, and, that, and see, that, that's where it becomes worse for us saints. Okay, that's when it's worse for us. We, are, we know better, but yet we still grab the hot pan. In some incidences. Okay, we do. But for a Christian... For a zealous religious, or a religious, I should say, uh, someone who's wiser in their own conceit, rather than seven men that can render a reason, that's terribly bradized. Okay? All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. What's the purpose? What's the end that justifies the mean? Remember what I told you about idolatry? Idolatry is always the reflection of the true idol, yourself. The strovia. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Mm, thy thoughts. The thought of foolishness is sin. And as we covered in uh, Monday's video, which, uh, uh, which will be in the uh, uh, description box. <laughs> I don't remember what it called it. Monday's video, okay. Um, about how we, we read about his thoughts are not our thoughts. Okay, praise the Lord. See, verse 2 and 3 right there. Why, what is the purpose behind it? Why are you doing, why am I doing this? So I can get subscribers? So I can, you know, puff up my ministry? God forbid, dude. No. I'm doing this because this is what the Lord wants me to do. And number two, he has given me something that I am supposed to share for you, with you. Okay. I'm doing this because I want to make my father happy. I mean, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, if I could do nothing else on earth in this life, which I have done horrible things in my life, okay, before I was saved, and even horrendous errors and mistakes that I have made as a saint, if there's nothing else I could do right now, Oh, wretched man that I am, make my father happy. Please him by, number one, believing that he is, and number two, doing what he wants me to do. Because I want, I, I want to hear at least just once. Well done. Good and faithful servant. That's why when you run into these Christians, well, I'm going to, you know, it's, I'm going to be in heaven. You know, the believe and receive idiots. You know, they, they live like a devil. They live in sin. It's like, well, I'm going to be in heaven. Well, number one, no, you're not. Because you, you have the wrong Jesus and the wrong gospel, number one. Okay, but, all right, that mentality. Okay, well, I, at least I'm going to be in heaven. And being in heaven is brr, totally better than being in hell. Absolutely. But, as we have given evidence before yeah you live like a devil the Lord, you, you live so badly that the Lord has to kill you because the way you reflect, uh, serve him reflects him so he's like okay you're, you're, you're doing come on you're out of here the Lord's going to be ashamed of you for eternity and see that's where the heretic is like see that that shows that shows who is the God of their lives. When they justify living in sin, giving you a license for sin, 
And then they just, well, I'm going to be in heaven at least. Okay, number one, if that were true, okay, and, re and remember, usually the ones who say that come from the disgusting free grace idiots, okay? But you, if that were true, okay, God is going to be ashamed of you for eternity. We've proven that before in several videos, okay? We, Father, through the scriptures, okay? I can't prove anything to you, okay? But see, all the ways of a man are, right, are clean in his own eyes. We want that, that red button theory, okay? Red button theory, all right? Red button theory, okay? See that red button? Don't touch it. There are all these other ones you can touch. Don't touch that one. This flesh. Go ahead and touch it. Yeah, if God said, go ahead and touch it. See, our flesh, where sin is relegated, wants that which we can't have. That's why sin is so beautiful to flesh. Okay? So, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Justify anything. But the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Oh, incidentally, brother, um, about your question, uh, the angel of the Lord, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I gave you the short answer to your qu question what you asked specifically, and I was kind of sooner or later expecting that question to come about. Um, it didn't come, I pray, love you, brother. Uh, it didn't come from the one who I thought would, would have asked that, and you know to whom I'm referring to. Uh, but um, <laughs> pray for your servant, dear brethren, on that. This is a little rabbit. Excuse me. Pray for your servant. That, you know how that, that's big. That's, that's big, you know. And what we do here is, you know, scripture. That's what we do here, <laughs> okay? Um Yes, um, I, I have not, uh, I'm not ignoring you, brother, or anything like that, God forbid. Um, that, that, please pray for your servant, brethren, about a video about the angel of the Lord. Um, that, that is, um, that is, <laughs> that's going to require discipline. That's going to require a lot of diligence. Uh, that's going to take a lot of study. Uh, to show scripturally. So <laughs> keep your servant in prayer about that. Okay. Now let's get back on track. Okay. The reason why you're doing things will always come out sooner or later. Okay. So all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigh the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And very quickly, um, you know, brother, when dealing with atheists, you got to keep this in mind. Until the atheist is made aware that in reality they are acting as their own God. Any evidence that you can... Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, okay? Praise the Lord. But remember, the atheist, one who claims not to believe in a deity, the better tactic, the better way, and this has been put into a lot of practice, okay? When dealing with the supposed atheist, it, the burden of proof is not on us, okay? The burden of proof... It's not on us. Number one, we can't. The Father is the one who does the proving, okay? Through the Scripture. And if they don't believe the Scripture, which they don't, okay, the burden of proof is not on us to prove that God is the author of the Scriptures. It's not on us. He'll do that. He'll do that. Okay? I've, I put that into practice. I've seen it. Okay? When you... Go to an atheist with that. Hey, 
You say you are an atheist, saying you don't believe in a God, you are a liar because you are the standard of your judgment of what is right and wrong, and God is the only one who knows truly what is right or wrong. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Okay? So, so, when dealing with atheists, brethren, remember, the burden of proof is not upon you or I. Okay? The Lord will prove himself to whomever. Okay? Yes. Yes. But the atheist has to first recognize that they are in fact being contrary to what they claim to be. They are their own God. And the one, and, and, and I'm not going to, the, the, the guy, you know, you're an atheist, you see this, you come here peacefully, you'll be treated peacefully. Okay, you're respectful, you'll be treated respectfully. You want to be a jerk, I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> okay? You want to be a jerk? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. All right, come on, boy. <laughs> All right? But, you know, you come peacefully, you'll be treated peacefully. That comment. And, 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 and hey, you know, the one, this is more rabbit, but it's, it's pertinent for our topic today. That one guy who came peacefully and left peacefully, and, hey, you, whatever your name was, atheist, I hope, I really do, I hope you have the best life you can have, man. I hope you enjoy your life. I hope, I hope you suckle until you are fat and happy. I hope everything goes well for you. I, 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 just, I hope that you live your days in happiness, joy, and bliss. I really, really, really do. I ha have a great life. Because, dear atheists, this is the only life you're going to have. You'll have, you know, you li only live once. It's nonsense. What awaits you after this? And see, when you get to a point with an atheist where they won't listen, that's because the scripture has punched them and it hurts. Okay? But the comment in Monday's video, and hey, hey, brethren, uh, that guy came peacefully. Let him go peacefully, okay? And like I said, dude, if you watch this, I, I seriously mean, have a great life. Please, enjoy it, okay? But here's how, and this was telling, brother. This was telling. That, that's why when you look at these, especially comments, you really need to be analytical like our brother Alexander B. Hartley. You need to really look at it, okay? Here's how I define atheism. Right away, clue. Right away, a clue. Here's how I define atheism. The, atheism is, has a definition, okay? And, you know, you compare dictionaries, an older one with a newer one, uh, that it's horrifying to see how uh, things change. But when it comes to atheism, the base premise is you don't believe in God, a God, or in a deity. That's base, okay? All right? But here's how I define it. That right there. That right there. That opening statement shows a lot. Here's how I, ye shall be as gods. It's giving the atheist evidence or whatever is not vain. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's just more uh, fire upon his head, uh, more water to drink. Okay? It's worse. It would be better for them to not have known than to have known. This is why they like to go away 
when you confront the atheist with this. This is where you need to begin. Because when you get into the burden of proof is on us, the saint, round and round and round and round, it will and can go. No. Atheist, you're a liar. You do believe in a deity. You do believe in a God yourself, period, and go from there. That is how, where, you start with an atheist. Okay? Just wanted to make that. And that holds, that, that is pertinent for what we are talking about today. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I see if I, you know, reading the Proverbs publicly, I couldn't go, <laughs> you know. I read that this morning, and it's like, you know, this was there wanting to say this, you know. Anyway, let's continue. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Have you ever wondered why there are saints, saints, who we know are saints, but are just in horrific sin, but yet God hadn't taken them home? Uh, some of them are serving as bad examples. That is a possibility. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Hmm. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. You're right. And you're right. Can't dispute that. Saints can do any type of sin that the lost can do. Because God's not a God of coercion. Remember. We ought not to. But we have the capacity, even as saints. Why? Because our spirit and soul are here. <laughs> My turkey neck. <laughs> okay? Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand, join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Ooh. And join in hand. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Everybody join hands. Let's pray together. Though hand join in hand. Look at that. Look at that verse. Everyone that is proud in heart and is abomination to the Lord. Look at us. We're Christians. We're not. We we're not judging you. Oh, you're, you're in a sodomite affair and one and... Oh, that's when you need to come into the church. That's when you need to come. Hey, make sure, you know. Have you ever heard about tithing? No, give me a break. Huh? You're in an adulterous affair with a married woman. And Christianity... Come on. Come on. That's when you need to come to the church. And no. I love you. You you get your rear end out of here. May the Lord be merciful, and may he smack you upside that head of yours. For it's too late. Everyone that is proud and hard is an abomination of the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Any sin today in this dispensation can be forgiven. We'll look at that at the very end of this video. But any sin you commit can be forgiven. You don't have to worry about the unpardonable sin. You know why? Where is Jesus? Here. In the saints. Is he in Jerusalem physically? On a throne? No, he's not. Like that one woman, okay? You want the unpardonable sin to be viable today so you can justify yourself and boast about how pure and how righteous you are, you know, like that one guy from the Northeast. You know, look at how holy I am, you know? You can be forgiven for any sin, but the consequences of those sins which I am suffering today as a, for my sins as a lost man. I'm forgiven of them. 
I'm forgiven of all my sins. Yes, I am. I'm going to be with the Lord when I die. But today he has a purpose for me. But the consequences I'm paying for here, not eternally. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And that's understanding, departing from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Because the accuser of the brethren, you know, look what he's doing. He's like, and the Lord's like, hey, I bought him. And he's doing what he can to walk according to what I want him to do. Or her. Or her. Remember, the accuser of the brethren, Satan. Hmm. They never run out of ammunition. Except when a man's ways please the Lord. When you're doing something that is wrong, there's always ammunition. But, and we sin every day. We sin every day. But when you are making the attempt to live according to the standard, which not even Paul could do perfectly, okay, it will be better for you than not. And right here, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without rights. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Better to be with someone where love is and the, the means are pit, like pittance, but there's love there, rather than having hatred and having a six-course feast. A man's hawk deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. And you commit thy works unto the Lord. <laughs> think I'm doing this because I, I mean, I, I want to make my father happy, but, you know. <laughs> I, I, I rarely enjoy doing videos because I'm going to have to give an account for everything I say. That scares the hell out of me. That's why I try my best uh, to make sure I'm, you know, is this, am I right? Am I? That's why I love it. You know, when brethren, Brad, you, you say, you know, brethren do it. And sisters, you know, it's like, Brad, you, oh, oh, yeah, right. You know, praise the Lord. You know, I'm going to have to give the, every single thing I've ever said to you. I'm going to have to give them the comfort. That, that scares me. That's why diligence, vigilance in being in Scripture is so important. But commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. 25 out of 33. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, Romans 6. Romans 6. Did you see what I mean about, you know, how it's difficult to just read the Proverbs publicly without giving any <laughs> uh, scripture or expounding on things? <laughs> Romans 6, 20 under 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. And that's the freedom free grace gives you. Free grace. Free grace is not in Scripture. Freely by His grace, yes, but free grace is not in Scripture. And you know that too. Anyway, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. That's what the theology of free grace, which has infected the divided body of Christianity with, okay? What fruit had ye then in those things... Whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. 
My time is going to be cut short because of the sins I did as a lost man and the horrific hell I put my body through. And I know, I don't, I, I say, excuse me for saying that almost lightly, but um, yeah, I'm not going to live out the full measure of the days because of what I've done to myself as a lost man. That's why life in every breath, steal that from Bashuto, eh? Yeah. Yeah, but see, when the Bishutoist, the Taoist, or the uh, Shintoist, uh, or whatnot, a uh, very interesting thing to look into, the Japanese Shemitic Shintoism. That, that wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, you know, life in every breath. Uh, life in every breath to do what? To sin? No. That's why every moment is precious. That's why every moment is not to be wasted. In sin. But now being made free from sin, ye became servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We can justify anything, even saints. But like I said, with a saint, sooner or later, the justifications have to end. They, there's no choice. What are you going to say? And if the, they keep being dredged up, that's when you got to be like, okay, are you a saint? He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth of him, craveth it of him. Ooh. Red button theory. You're going to labor to do whatever you can do to justify whatever you can justify to press that red button. For his mouth craving. What, what does the mouth lead on to? The belly. His God is his belly? This isn't even the main text that we're getting into today. None God now. Okay. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself. I'm going to, all things are lawful for me. We've always, it's tradition, man. Oh, if I get with that person, I, I could save him. Oh, good luck. Hmm? Well, you know, there's this, there's that, there's the other thing. You know, I am eternally secure, so I mean, come on, you know. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself. For his mouth. What does the mouth go down to? The belly. And when you are in that revolving door of justification, self-justification, then hand join in hand with the wrong people. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. And, his, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. These are traits of someone who is not. But see, when a saint gets involved and there is a way that seemeth right unto, the, unto a man. All things are lawful unto me. And they are. You can do anything that a, a lost person can do. But you're going to pay a heavy price. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself. For his mouth craveth it of him. A violent man enticeth his neighbor. And leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Choosing, willfully choosing to be ignorant. Turning a blind eye to something you know you shouldn't be doing. He shuts his eyes to bring, to devise forward things. 
moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. You can you can talk yourself into anything sometimes, can't you? The hoare head is a crown of glory. Take your pen here and you circle that. If if it be found in the way of righteousness, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. There's a way that seems right unto a man. The end thereof are the ways of death. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Lost false converts, when confronted with truth, uh, get angry very easily. Okay? All right? Over time, and uh, we talked about this, uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley and I, about in time your, th thin, your, your skin can become thick and you can get, you know, certain things won't bother you, but then there's a counter-argument as with Job, as we discussed, um, the constant wearing upon that thick skin can make people do things unadvisedly. Not make them because, again, excuse me, excuse me. Because, again, God's not holding a gun at your head. Okay? He's not. The lot is cast into the lap. But the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Give you this, now what are you going to do with it? Come to me and I'll tell you. Oh, you you, you want to do what you want to do? Oh, oh, you're going to justify it? You're going to take my word out of context? Justify yourself? Okay, fine. Be careful. I can say that to you. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Deuteronomy 22. Be not unequally yoked. What is a yoke? It's orange, not yellow. <laughs> I, I could see you sitting there, beloved, <laughs> knowing how that uh, beautiful brain of yours works. I, I could just picture it. <laughs> what is the yoke? Oh, it's, it's orange, not yellow. Talking about the yoke of an egg. Well, what is the yoke talking about in Scripture right here? Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It's a piece of farm equipment. Usually it's a piece of wood. With two things on it and uh, the two cows or whatnot or two horses or two mules or two asses or whatever. And they get in there and they go together. Okay? That's the yoke. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I believe in Jesus. Which one do you believe in? The one that says God loves you? Or well, the one who is. Which Jesus do you believe in? The devils also believe and tremble. Again, Trinitarian. Again, Trinitarian. You got the wrong God. <laughs> okay. But, Deuteronomy 22, 9 unto 11. Now, before we read this, does God take, take care for oxen? No doubt this is written for us too. Under the law, this was, of course, you know, don't do that. But for our instruction in righteousness, what is this telling us? Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, differing seeds. Lest the fruit of thy seed, which thou hast sown, and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. You know, when you're gardening, you have a row for just carrots. 
and a row just for cabbage, okay, and a row for um, uh, melons, you know, and uh, one brother, he, he, he showed the beautiful uh, picture of a melon that he grew. It's like, oh, wow, dude, <laughs> get yourself some salt and chop that thing up. Oh, I, I'm sure you enjoyed it. Praise the Lord, brother. Okay, but you know, in those rows, you don't put like carrot and then carrot seed and then uh, uh, a fennel seed on top of there. Okay, you don't do that. Why? Because if they mix together, and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Now, under the law, this was pertinent there because number one, there was no eternal security under the law. Under the law, it was faith and works. Uh, by grace through faith was not during the law. Okay, those idiots are lying to you. Verse 10. Thou shalt not, okay, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together, a donkey. An ox is a lot bigger. A donkey, an ass, a mule. Forget, I get that, I think ass is female, uh, mule is male, but whatever. Um, yes, uh, uh, thou shalt not plow with the ox and the ass together. Why? One's bigger than the other. They're different. Okay? You might want to get cute about marriage. Well, she's the weaker vessel. Yes, she is. But see, are you equally yoked in that you have the same father? That you're on the same page? That you can peacefully cohabitate together, okay? One Marriage will be, video will be in the description box for you, okay? Where we go through this kind of stuff, okay? Verse 11, thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as woolen and linen together. Wool socks, cloth pants, and cashmere <laughs> or silk shirt. Okay, okay. Instruction in righteousness, what does this mean? Horses be with horses. Birds with birds. Japheth with Japheth. Ham with ham. Shem with Shem. Saints with saints. Under, now, under law, yes, yes, that's specific. Because, remember, under the law, there was no death, burial, or resurrection, or bloodshed on the cross, and eternal security was not there. It was not by grace through faith. Okay? There was no eternal security, meaning, under the law, Holy Ghost can come and go and come and go. Okay? All right? So, right there, in Deuteronomy 22... For our instruction in righteousness, we see what? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What does a saint have to do being yoked with someone who isn't a saint? Verse 14 in 2 Corinthians 6. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? You want to see an example of this scripturally? Go to Judges. Go to Judges. Let's look at our beloved Dunderhead. Beloved Dunderhead? Who are you talking about? Uh, uh, Samson. <laughs> our beloved Dunderhead. Uh, I believe uh, Samson is in heaven waiting for us. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't. Well, no, I'm not, you know, because at the end he realized how badly he messed up. But here's an example. Now, under the law, there was no eternal security. And we're going to see a verse in here that proves that eternal security was not present under the law. Because the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, because that circumcision made without hands, wasn't there. Okay? What is that? The permanent seal of the Lord. Okay? Wasn't there. But, Samson, 
Thunderhead. I like Samson. He was a Nazarite, not a Nazarene. Okay, you can read about the Nazarite thing uh, and whatnot. He was he, he was a chosen vessel unto the Lord. But you know what Samson did? He messed around. He played with his calling. He had an unsatiable, lascivious appetite for flesh. Okay. The, I'm not gonna. Uh, he was a he was a player. He was a man. You know, he 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 would bed as many women as he could, pretty much, pretty much. And Scripture gives that testimony of him. Uh, you know, he he laid with harlots and, but yet, he was a Nazarite. He was a judge in Israel. He died well, right with God. Okay. All right. But Samson was was okay, he, you know, he was a he was a vessel for God. What happened to him? Judges 16, 4 and 6. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Delilah. Delilah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Now, Samson, who was a Nazarite, played around. I mean, you, you, you read the very first verse in chapter 16 here. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw there in Harlan and went into in onto her. Okay, the guy was a player. Okay, he was. He done the head. <laughs> now, I do not believe that Samson was the sharpest knife in the drawer. I don't. I, 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 I think he, 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 you know, he was a dunderhead. Okay. <laughs> All right. What happened? Because he lusted after the flesh. He wanted the red button theory. He wanted something that he shouldn't have had. So then he ends up with Delilah, a manipulative. Vile woman. Manipulative. Verse 6. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Then Samson, you know, what does he say here? It's like, uh, bind this, uh, you know, bind me with green widths. I'll be like any man. And what is Okay, and then what does Delilah do? She goes ahead and does it. And then she's like, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. Right now, see, Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Okay, uh, I bet you that Delilah was a gorgeous, knocked down, beautiful woman. Just like uh, Jezebel. Just like Sin made to look so beautiful. I bet you Delilah was Ah! Oh, oh! I I bet she was visually astounding. I bet I bet you she was. A woman who feared the Lord, she shall be praised. That that outer shell, in time, is going to sag. That outer shell, if on the inside is full of dead men's bones, it's disgusting. But like I said, I'm sure Delilah. Was absolute. I'm sure she was. Look at verse ten. This is after you know Samson like ha ha ha. Okay, well, right away she asks him, "How do I make you weak?" And he tells her this one thing, and he and she does it. One ain't that done the head, but num verse ten. Manipulation, the using of um, emotivity sensuality, sensorality to get to someone who she knew. Delilah had a Samson's number. 
She knew that he wanted this. She used it. That works both ways, guys. Especially when you know that you have women going after you. <laughs> anyway. And Delilah said unto Samson, manipulation, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Yeah, he did. Remember, Samson wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. I do not believe that at all. Anyway. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou might, mightest be bound. Eh? Okay. Uh, and then new ropes, what was it? In the first one, he said, bind me with seven green widths. And then in this one, verse 11, he says, okay, bind me fast with new ropes that were never occupied. Then shall I be weak and be as a, any other man. So what does the Lila do? She goes ahead and does it. Genius. Samson. <laughs> okay. And of course, it, ha ha, didn't work. Look at verse 13. And Delilah said unto Samson, Manipulation. Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. This is a, by the way, um, there are those, the black Hebrew Israelites want to say that um, Samson was black. A Hamite. No, he wasn't. He was a Hebraic Jew. Okay. All right. He was not. He was not black. He was not white. He was a Hebraic Jew. He was Shemitic. But the seven locks of his head. Why dreadlocks? Yes. Obviously. Now, were they like the Norwegian Viking braids? We don't know. All we see is locks. So, or the, like, you know, the Norwegians, the Viking people the, of the Rus and whatnot, Russians and whatnot, the Vikings, they would wear, they had long hair, we won't get into that, but they would wear the Viking braids, the long braids and whatnot like that. Was that what this was? It says locks. There's a difference, women, sisters, there's a difference between a braid and a dreadlock, and it doesn't say dreadlock. Okay? But that's, the, you know, I'm bringing that up because the black Hebrew Israelites looked at that. It's like, see, Samson was a black man. That stupid um, thing done by the God loves you, Roma Downey devil uh, had Samson as a black man in that. And it was all because of the locks and things like that. Samson was not black. Samson was not white. Samson was a Hebraic Jew. Okay? Just so you know. Let's continue. So she does that, gives him like a ponytail or whatnot and pins it and she does, Samson, and you know, uh, Philistines be upon you, Samson, and he's like, ha ha, and pulls the thing out, okay? Verses 15 on to verse 17 now. And she said unto him, how canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. You want to talk about unequally yoked, but see, here's the thing. Samson messed around. He knew better. He did. Oh, he did. He needed to go to, he had to have his eyes gouged out and his head shaved. But the grace, let's see, grace is in every dispensation. If it wasn't, we'd all go up like a pup because his hair grew back. Okay, that's a symbol of God's grace to him. Okay? He knew better. But he wanted something. Uh, like I said, I'm sure Delilah was, Mwah! I'm sure she was. One that a grown man would probably salivate over. Well, a dunderhead did. Okay? Would I say that to his face if he were alive today? No. Well, well yeah, I would. <laughs> but it's like, duh, what are you, you, are you dumb? Uh, excuse me, are you stupid? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> but the manipulation there. How can you say you love me when you're not sharing these things with me? How can you say you love me? Manipulation. And she <laughs> never loved him. 
Why? She's doing number one. She's trying to afflict him so she can get the money. That that that's telling. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. Uh, what is that? And a contentious woman is a uh, continual uh, a rainy day and a and a contentious woman are alike. A contentious woman and a rainy day where the rain never ceases, seems to never stop, and a contentious woman like Delilah are alike. And the context of that is, you know, why was she contentious? Samson isn't doing what he was supposed to do. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed and unto death. Manipulation. Oh, they're not they're just sisters, women. Oh, when women want to get a point across and becomes pouty, contentious, and brawling, oh, it is better to live in the corner of a housetop. It is better to go out on walkabout. It is better. Amen. 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 Withhold themselves. If, of course, you ought to be married. Uh-huh. That he told her all his heart. So, Delilah used manipulation... Probably with help. I'm like I said again. I'm sure Delilah was gorgeous, and because that was the criteria for a dunderhead here, Samson, um, her, you know, being a pouty little, you know what, and uh, withholding herself from, uh, you know, doing whatnot and whatnot, and okay, yeah. So he was vexed, vexed it on the death, that he finally gave in, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak, and, I, and be like any other man. And that was the facts. And even it's like, and when Delilah saw that, he had told her all his heart. See, that's one thing about you women. When a man is being up front with you, men can deceive you. I mean, we, we men... Uh, we, we can be very deceptive. Okay, let's be honest. Especially with ourselves. But when you got a man on the prowl with a woman who's dressed like a whore, okay, and using that body and like drooling like a dog over the meat that's being dangled, he'll come up with anything. Okay? I remember that. A man. A man, when he zeroed in on flesh of a woman, that burn can be intolerable. Or intolerable, I should say. Again, our, our dear brother Jeff, I, I, um, I, I love that bro. I love our dear brother Jeff. Um, he doesn't have that burn that a lot, like I, I couldn't, you know, I have a burn, okay? I, I couldn't be like Brother Jeff. He could take it or leave it. You know, even, he, you know, he's a sweetheart. He's like, oh, yeah, sure, I love a woman, but it's like, you know, whatever, you know. He, he, and that's him, whatever. I mean, I don't have that, okay? But see, a man who's burning, that can become so overwhelming. Even Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. But see, that's where you got to make the right choice. That's where you got to make sure that if you're going to get involved with that, that you two are going to be equally yoked. Let's read verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shoot me all his heart. The lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. 
Then she made him sleep in her, in her lap. And then why she didn't do it, but some other dude did, I don't know. But uh, he fell asleep in her lap, you know. Are you poor, are you, I love you, go, I love you, you know, that kind of thing. And then someone comes and shaves his head. And she's like, Philistine, she got her money. She got her money. And then what does she do? The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Verse 20. It's not by grace through faith under the law. There was no eternal security under the law. And he said, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, Ha ha! I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Come and go, come and go under the old under the law, under the old testament. Eternal security was not there. Okay. He was a Nazarite. Okay? Again, don't believe these idiot uh, free gracers who tell you it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. That That's stupid. Okay? Now, looking back at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. This was a good... Now, remember, Samson played around. Okay? But the fact is, verse 17... For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. A Nazarite. He was given unto God. He was a servant of the Lord. And he got messed up with someone who he should never have gotten messed up with. And it cost him his eyes. Made sport for him. But the hair began to grow back. And he's like, Lord... Give me this strength one more time so I could be avenged upon mine enemies. And he bowed himself and pulled the things apart and he died with them. Redeemed. Okay? I believe Samson is up there in heaven. Okay? I don't think he'd be angry with me at... Uh, I don't. <laughs> okay? Because it's like... That was a dunderhead. Have we been dunderheads? Uh, unless you're like a, a perfect guy from Blackpool or Maine or from Canada... Or something like that, right? <coughs> Verse 14 in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Communion. Now, communion as... Christianity knows it, where they have the little bread and the little wine, and you know, communion is a time of self reflection with the Lord. Okay? You can have communion by yourself. Don't believe these idiot Christians, and I'm saying that with charity. Okay? <laughs> Don't believe these idiot Christians that say you have to be in a church building. To have communion. No. You can in prayer have communion. Have a little piece of unleavened bread. And a little thing of wine or grape juice. Whatever. You can do that yourself. Because communion is a moment of self-reflection. Self-examination. Okay? Examining yourself. Self-examination. I'll, I'll find the video where we talk about that. Okay? Alright? That's what communion is. It is not salvific like the Roman Catholic Church tells you. You know, you know, drink the wine and have the cookie. No, it's not salvific. It's a time of reflection and self-examination with the Lord. Okay? But there are those out there that say that this context in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 on to verse 18, has nothing to do with marriage, but just with fellowship. Well, fellowship is right there, and communion is right there. But here, here's the thing. What more intimate fellowship and communion can you have when you join hand in hand in marriage with someone? Though hand join in hand? Okay? What more fellowship, what more communion can you have than marriage? 
Hey, you know, saying that, well, this has nothing to do with marriage is very similar to someone saying about Jeremiah 10 that you can't use it for instruction in righteousness to rebuke you by putting a satanic Christ's mass tree in your house. <laughs> yes, I did. What more intimate communion, fellowship is there between, supposed to be with a man and a woman? The only one that is more is what? And Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, I believe it is, about the, how he, you know, the marriage, you know, uh, likened unto Christ and the church. You, saint, have God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, you're saying it there. The Lord is that spirit dwelling within you. You don't get more closer than that. The reflection of that for us. Marriage. But are you equally yoked? And see, the thing about a brother, okay? Uh, uh, Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, just one verse, verse 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. I had a lot of friends, well, no, I didn't, but I had friends as a lost man. I have a, a relation, blood relation brother, okay? But being born again, I have many brethren. Many brethren. But a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18, 1 verse 24. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And this whole thing about uh, closer than a brother, what a friend we have in Jesus. Hmm? He is our father. Okay? Yes. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And you know, when you bring up the thing about brother, right? Well, you know, what, you know, brothers, you know, blood brothers. Uh, need I remind you of Cain and Abel? <laughs> they were brothers. What happened? Cain killed Abel. Oh, what about um, Absalom and Amon? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. 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 There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. <laughs> okay. Uh, just because, I mean, blood, bro, Cain and Abel, dude. They were, you know, they, they, Cain killed his own blood brother. Oh, family this, family that. Two brothers, you know, who had, and Cain and Abel had the same father and mother. Killed, Cain killed Abel. Absalom and Amon. They had different mothers, I think. But, you know, same father, you know. Okay? But in Genesis 2, Genesis 2, verses 21 on 25. Genesis 2, 21 on 25. The Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh there instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her onto the man. Again, there are guys out there who say, well, this has nothing to do with marriage. Shut up! Shut up! Count your cars and pennies, pal. No. What more intimate fellowship and communion can you have Carnally, 
than with your wife or with your husband. There is no more closer communion that you can have as a saint because you have God the Father dwelling within you. That's pretty personal, buddy. And no matter what you do, he ain't leaving you. Keep that in mind the next time you decide to sin, huh? If you see this. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does woman mean? Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, what communion hath light with darkness, huh? And Genesis 1, while we're here, Genesis 1, verses 4 and verse 5. And what communion hath light with darkness? And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the, the, the first day. The definitive article. The first day. God divided the light from the dark. Don't plow with an ox and an ass. Don't uh, plant your vineyard with different kinds of seed. Don't wear different types of clothing. We do that all the time, made out of different material. Point, instruction, and righteousness. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I believe in Jesus. Which one? Which one? And God called the light day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 5 out of 10. Saints, ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Hold your place here. One verse. Oh, 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 oh. One verse in Proverbs 4. One verse in Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, what verse is it? 19. The way of the wicked. Uh, let's read verses 18 and 19 in Proverbs 4. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble, children of darkness. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse 6 and 1 Thessalonians now, chapter 5. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us saved people to wrath, we're not going through the time of Jacob's trouble, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Come up hither! You ought to share that, what you did with Ephesians 1, brother. You ought to share that with the body of Christ. <clears throat> For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay? All right? Now, look at verse 15 in uh, 2 Corinthians 6. Excuse me. <clears throat> 
And what concord hath Christ with B. Lael? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Infidel. Proverbs 26. Where is a fool? Fool says in his heart there is no God. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Oh, where are we? 23 under 26. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shared covered with silver dross. Now, someone correct me. A pot shared is a piece of farming equipment. Now, whether it was one of the teeth that were on the plow itself or whether it was something that you could hold in your hand, I'm not clear on. Regardless, the pot shared was a uh, farm equipment or a tool at the least. Covered with silver dross. We, the dross in us is to be, over time, done away with. Okay, supposed to be. Okay, dross. The refining process. The sanctification process. When the Lord chastens the saint. The dross, a uh, little bit more dross, be taken away from purified gold and silver. Purification process, right? Look at that verse. Burn. When you're unequally yoked, whoever it is, their lips are burning and a wicked heart are like a pot shared, something that's supposed to be useful, covered with silver dross. The dross that is taken from the silver. False God. Or someone who, who thinks they are and they're not. I'm saying because I just believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you? <laughs> no. He that hateth dissembleth, assemble, dissembleth with his lips. If I'm wrong about that, someone correct me. And layeth up deceit within him. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? Well, God knows my heart. I am saved because I just... <laughs> Up the dosage, pal. When he speaketh fair, beautiful, softly, you know, never bringing their voice above a whisper, always sounding like a docile, sweet old man, huh? Excuse me. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit, silver dross. It's not purified silver. It's silver dross. It's the refuge taken away. Or whatever. It's the stuff taken away. Not the silver itself. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Dude, sooner or later, they, they, they shoot themselves in the foot. They do. Sooner or later. The false will always reveal themselves sooner or later. That takes time, which unfortunately we do not have. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. And we don't have time, do we? And what are we reading to? That was it. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. How can you say you love me? Her wickedness was shewed to the whole congregation. Hmm. Hmm. First Corinthians. Okay, now let's uh, let's continue read this. Okay. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now, let's look at that in Proverbs 26 again. Okay? That silver dross, that silver dross, burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shared, something that's meant to be useful, covered with silver dross. Not the silver itself, but the stuff, the, the refuge that's taken, or refuse, excuse me, refuse that's taken away from it. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Ecclesiastes 10. Verse 1 on verse 3. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Mm. Dead flies. You know flies? You know about flies? You know that they're constantly vomiting, regurgitating? They're very unclean. Uh, pestilence can be spread through them. Okay? But dead flies, what does that say? Cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. And you hath he quickened saints, people who are saved, who are sealed until the day of redemption, who were dead in trespasses and sins, dead flies, Flies buzz around, puke on you, and then go out, go away. Small. Flies are small. Representation of sin. Dead flies, sin, cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. And remember, you can't stop sinning. Paul missed that memo. Okay? When in time past, Ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, Lucifer, the spirit, lowercase s, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You hear the truth, the gospel. Hey, you know, atheist, you've heard the truth. You're, you're not, you can't, you're not going to be able to stand before the Lord at the uh, great white throne and say you didn't know. Oh, yes, you did. You heard it. You were warned. Among whom also we all, people who are saved, had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. By nature, natural man, unregenerate, not saved, not born again, not made a new creature. And also too, and also too, I keep getting this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 21 on to verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 21 on to 22. Come on. Now, he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us. The anointing that we have is what? God the Father dwells within us. We are not little Christs. We have God the Father living within us. Sealed us. When saved, always saved. And given us the earnest of the capital S Spirit in our hearts. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom, fear of the Lord, and honor. Hmm. And, on the, and now, and, and now uh, go on to, uh, what did we just read? 2 Corinthians uh, 21. We uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now go to 1 John 2. Sealed us. Anointing, okay? 1 John 2, verses 24 and 27. 
Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, again, that's he's referencing shall remain in you, meaning if you're actually saved, okay, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Just believe and receive. You got to go to Christ Church. You're saved because you're black. You got to go to every. Uh, you got to be there when the doors are open every day. Uh, God loves you. God's not mad at you. Blah 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 blah. But the anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you. What is that anointing? We just read it. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost. Okay, saved, sealed people. And ye need not that any man teach you the spirit of truth. He shall guide you in all truth. But he has ordained man to use, to teach you, that he should speak through man, through the scriptures unto you. That's how that works, okay? But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Okay? Okay? All right, and pra, uh, Psalm 120, Psalm 120, Psalm 120, hopefully we can get this one done. Uh, in my distress I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips. I believe in Jesus, which one? Uh, God knows my heart. Yeah, he sure does. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Context, he's talking about himself here. What shall be given unto thee? Or what shall, thou, what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Who has a false tongue? Oh, the easy believists, Catholics, Pentecostals. Hmm. Can you Bible even Christians? Remember, you guys, you've made yourself just another denomination of the, of the divided body of Christianity. Good for you, okay? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshach, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. Unequally yoked with someone? My soul hath long dwelt with him, that hateth peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. There is no peace to the wicked. See, the peace that the Christianity offers you is peace with sin and freedom with God. There's no peace in that. Only a delusion. And when the saint Okay, in any context of being unequally yoked, why are you hanging out with lost people? Are you married to someone who isn't saved? I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. They get angry quickly. Their pot shared covered with silver dross. They dissemble with their lips, not willing to hear truth and consider. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, verses 1 on to verse 9. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. What ruler are you sitting to? Uh, sitting for? Um, which ruler or two rulers will be in the description box? Okay, got a video on this. Okay. The Lord gives you himself that you may depart from the snares of the wicked. Satan gives you the world in a moment of time that he, he, that he may keep you in sin. 
Think of Samson. He had an appetite. He loved women. Be not desirous of his dainty meats. Ah. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? That beautiful looking woman, that beautiful looking man, uh, in time that's going to sag. That facade that they're trying to keep up. Okay? Who they really are will be shown you. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat, not, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainties. For as he thinketh in his heart, I'm saying because I just believe I had the cookie, I'm black, uh, I, I'm elect, uh, I go to the church, fellas house, every time the days are open, uh, doors are open, I speak in tongues, and blah, 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 blah. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Of course not. Because they are their own God. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Right here. Verse 9 ties this up. Speak not in the ears of a fool. Pot shared, covered with silver dross, whose wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Go back to Ecclesiastes 10 now. Okay? Go back to Ecclesiastes 10. You were like, Brad, don't, don't, worry, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay? Dead flies cause the ointment of, a, of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. It doesn't, again, it doesn't mean if you're left-handed that's anything bad. Christ is synonymous with at the right hand of God, and ye on the left hand depart from me, ye who work wickedness, right and left, okay? The left hand path, the right hand path, okay? That's what that means. There's no gray area. There's no option C, okay? Yea, also, when he that is a fool who says in his heart there is no God except themselves. This is how I define atheism. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. His wisdom, cease from thine own wisdom, faileth him. Why? Because what wisdom is it? Earthly, sensual, devilish. It faileth him. When someone who ain't saved, trying to walk the way of Christ, trying to be something they're not, sooner or later, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. And they're going to be revealed that when they try to do as what a saint ought to do, they fail at it. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. There you go. That's when you don't speak in the ears of a fool. Why? Because it won't do any good. There, you're set in your ways, right? You're set in your way. God, ah, God knows my heart. You're set in your ways. Verse 16 in 2 Corinthians 6. 
And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. This one is simple. This is simple. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Psalm 50 to start. Psalm 50 to start. This one, this is simple. Yeah. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Psalm 50, 16 on verse 9. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. There are some of you who will not read the scriptures because you have done that, and you're saints, because you know you have the sneaking suspicion if you were to read the scriptures sober, you would be, your hide would be cut off. You would be chastened. You would be bludgeoned by the sharpest weapon on earth. You're not reading it because you know, have this sneaking suspicion of what God's going to do. You're right. Because the Lord who is, the Jesus who is, puts his finger on what lacks. That's how he rolls. That's a, Atheists don't like that. Christians don't like that. Saints love it. When thou sawest the thief, what does the thief do? They boot the door. And Jesus Christ is the door, genius. They boot the door out of the way and climb up another way. That's a thief and a robber. So when thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him. And has been partaker with adulterers. Unless, of course, you're like these perfect guys, you know, who never, you know, never have any moments of hypocrisy. You love that word. And, or who, you know, never sin because you have, a, you know, your whatever you got to uphold and Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy frame and thy tongue frameth deceit. Trying to convince yourself? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. When someone, a fool, walketh by the way, right here. But when you, when it's the red button theory going on, when it's something you want, or you think you want, it's like, don't touch it. And your flesh is what wants it. But now let's go, let's go with the obvious. 1 Corinthians uh, 3, okay? This, this one is obvious. This, this is very obvious. Uh, almost didn't write this down, but it's like, hey, you know what? That, that's what we do here about the scriptures, okay? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 out of 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capital S spirit of God dwelleth in you, and the Lord is that spirit? Dude, Christian, the phallus house church buildings is not where God is. The little G God of this world, uh, which we read about in Ephesians 2, that's where he is. Okay, but the God who is don't dwell in temples made with hands today. Okay? All right, your little satanic Roman Catholic phallus house church building is anti-New Testament. Okay, it is. God's not, you don't go to a, God forbid you don't go to a church building to find God. Where are you sending them? Where are you sending them? Uh, 
the Lord Jesus Christ through his word. The perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. I just want to send it on you idiot. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are in the temple of God and that the spirit of God can't bless dwelleth in you? If any eager did take, take your pen, if any man get it, get your little thing there. Don't use a marker, especially if you have what is called India paper, like the Cambridge and the Elons have, okay? Okay? But then you go ahead and mark that, okay? If any man, any man includes you, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which ye are, temple ye are. And before you are saved, your body is in the temple of the Holy Ghost. When you are saved, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. But see, the consequences of what you did to your body as a lost person, hi. Now, like I said, this, this part is easy. And Ephesians chapter 1, you ought to share that. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That's between you and the Lord. Okay? Ephesians chapter th uh, 1, verses 13 on verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, once saved, always saved, with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Unto the praise of his glory. We are purchased. We are not yet redeemed. We are saved. We are eternally secure. When I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. Okay? That's that's the thing. I mean, going through, you know, with the heart suddenly stopping and me having a heart attack or a stroke or whatever, uh, that, that's going to hurt for a bit, but then I'm going to be with the Lord. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Okay? My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Lord. My Father, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, lives in me. You don't get more personal than that. Okay? You don't. <laughs> you don't. Acts 7. Acts 7. Acts 7, we already quoted, but we're going to read it here. Acts 7, 48 out of 50. And he's quoting from, I believe it is, Isaiah 63, I believe it is, or something like that. Verse 48 on the 50 in Acts 7. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? God's not in your church building. God forbid. The little G-God of this world is in there. Yes, he is. Talk to them, especially when they come out offering them tracks. They don't like that. They don't like that. I don't need this. Are you sure, lady? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Woman dressed like a man. Yeah, coming out of a Methodist church building. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Uh, and, of course, like I said, this the, I almost didn't add this, but, you know, this is what we do here. This is what we do here. Colossians 1. Verse 27, okay? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of of the glory of this mystery among you Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, dwelling in you. You don't get more personal communion than that. And see, the marriage, which Paul makes the beautiful thing with Ephesians 5, um, that's what our marriages are supposed to be. But if you go about to yoke yourself up with someone who you shouldn't be yoked up with. 
And, and let's, of course, ask Gal uh, uh, Galatians 2, 20, uh, 20 and 21. Let's just read this, okay? Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, crucified to myself and to the world. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I thought we were sealed with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you are. If you're a saint, saved, yes. Went the way of the cross, you know, um, broken, contrite, in fear of him, called upon him, and he saved you and seals you. Yes, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit, and Jesus Christ is God the Father. You have the Father dwelling within you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. 1 John 3, verse 9. You imbeciles who, when you go stop sinning, <laughs> I didn't sin anymore. <laughs> Shut up. 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. We are born again. We are sealed with the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit, one God. Comprised of the Spirit, soul, and body. We have the Father living within us. So, who is, whosoever is born of God does not, doth not commit sin. Being born again comprises Jesus Christ the Father dwelling within you. You're a new creature. Born again. God within you cannot, will not commit sin. He will not guide you into sin. He is not okay with sin. But see, God doesn't hold a gun to your head forcing you to make the right decisions. Okay? For his seed, proof there, remaineth in him. His seed. Reference on to the Holy Ghost, the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, who dwells within the believer. For his seed remaineth in him, and he, the seed, the Father, Jesus Christ, cannot sin, because he, the person, me, you, are, is born of God. We are born again. We, have, we are a new creature because we have the Father within us. That's what this is talking about. Watch out for these people who come to this and say, uh, you got to stop sinning. They're lying to you. Paul couldn't have done that. Paul couldn't do that. You can't do that. And someone who says that they've stopped sinning, they're lying, okay, and they're calling themselves God, sinless, because oh, God don't sin. God can't sin. So you're a little Christ, huh? The Lord rebuke you. And you got yourself a hot bed waiting for you, you wicked devil filth. Okay? Okay? Mm, nothing but love, right? <laughs> Verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, this is easy. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, under the law, where there was no eternal security. Under the law, Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Just one verse. Verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Context Babylon. Who's Babylon there, Eric? America? <laughs> you, you, you Jesuit coadjutor filth? No. Mystery Babylon is Roman Catholicism. The Roman Catholic Church. Go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Revelation 18. Speaking of Rome. Roman Catholicism. Oh. Oh, brethren, oh, brethren, brethren, brethren. Oh, what a glorious day when Rome will be destroyed and all her daughters. There'll be no more easy believers. Oh, no more. There, 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 there'll be no more Calvin, Calvinism. Okay. 
There'll be no more of this nonsense. No more with the destruction of the mother of harlots. Revelation 18, 1 on 8, a little context here. After this dispensation, so under the law, today in this dispensation, wherefore come out from among them, but Christianity, hey, got to be like the lost to win the lost. These stupid free gracers are notorious for this. You know, hey, the more sin you do, the better it is for you. We're not under even the morality of the law. You know, we're under grace. Their grace is a license to sin and freedom from God. Stay away from them, okay? And after these things, uh, Revelation 18 went on to verse 8. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. This is after this dispensation. So in three different dispensations, we see this come out from among them. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. In fellowship and communion, and what's the most intimate kind of communion that you can have? Man and wife, what's even more intimate than that? New creature, the Father dwelling within you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. You think about that. If you're unequally yoked with someone, and you're, you're, you know, you're like married to a lost person or something, um, and we're going to address this quickly here after we read this. Uh, for a saint, the context is different, okay? Uh, but um, when you join yourselves, one flesh, and remember, one flesh means more than just the physical. But when you do that physical, that's something to be made aware of. We're adults here, aren't we? There are some of you who are contemplating doing this exact thing that we are addressing here. This is for you. Because if you're going to, all things are lawful for you, if you're going to make that disastrous decision. The impossible is possible with God, yes. But if you are going to make that disastrous decision, There is a quote, I don't know who said it. The loneliest I have ever been is when I was a married man. I, that, I, I don't know, uh, that was a quote from somebody, okay? Uh, okay? Well, flip that. The loneliest I have ever been is when I was a married woman. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, like the, the bird of the Trinity. Okay? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies, which we already addressed. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. What are we reading to? Verse 8. How much she hath glorified herself. Just believe and receive. Hey, I had the cookie. Hey, I'm black, huh? I speak in tongues. I'm there when the doors are open. And live deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said, Queen, Mother Church. <laughs> and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. <laughs> Therefore shall her plagues roam, come in one 
Nay, all these centuries to build up this system that that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be inhabiting, will be destroyed <laughs> like that. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Now let's think about divorce. Okay, we, and this is addressed in the marriage video. Okay, there are scriptural grounds for divorce. If you cheat on your spouse, that's scriptural grounds for divorce. Okay. The other one is one of the other one is that um, Paul talks about in First uh, Corinthians seven. If two lost people are married and one gets saved, if one gets saved, okay, and they're still married and that lost person wants to stay with that saved person, okay, but two lost people get married, one gets saved, and the other doesn't want to be with that saved person, and they go, according to the scriptures, that's acceptable. 1 Corinthians 7 does not give license or credence for a saint to knowingly go and marry someone lost. All things are lawful for you. All things are lawful for you. But not all things are expedient. You will pay a price which you will regret every day. Lord can forgive you. The Lord can bring about fruit out of that. Yes. But the saint scripturally has no business getting married to someone who isn't. That is not what the context of 1 Corinthians 7 is about. Not at all. The context is two lost people get married, one gets saved, and the one who's not saved wants to stay, fine. They want to leave, go. The Lord has called you unto peace. A brother or sister is not under bondage in, in any bondage under such cases. Okay? Another one that comes up, and uh, this one I've, I've run into with Catholics, if they, if you're in a marriage, one of you is saved, or let's say you're a saint, uh, you're a woman, you're a saint, and you're married to somebody who thinks they're a saint, and he beats the snot out of you. Now, in Scripture specifically, in Scripture specifically, it does not specifically address that, you know, well, an abusive spouse. Rome will tell you no matter what, stay married, unless there's, you know, adultery. But when it comes to getting a snot beat out of you, but here's the thing. We already read in Genesis, bone of our bones, flesh of our flesh. We are to love our wives as our own selves. We are to have... Uh, um, you know, what is it, reverence or whatever unto our wives as the weaker vessels, as heirs of the grace of life, unless our prayers be hindered. So in marriage, you are one flesh. That includes the bed. We talk about this in the marriage video. Okay? You are one flesh you know, when you come together, but that one flesh is more than just physical. You are one flesh. That's my, that's my flesh. You're her flesh. We are one, not just in the bed. So when you, number one, claiming to be a, a saint and you smacking you, number one, you ain't a man. You ain't a man. You're scum. You're scum. And as, as we have addressed on several occasions, you know, <laughs> beg your pardon, brethren. But as we have addressed on several of occasions, 
if a woman is going to come at a man with a weapon that can emasculate him or eviscerate him or something, and he defends himself, so, eh, that's a different story. But you have a bad day at work, come home and want to beat up on your woman. You can't watch your favorite TV show, so you're, and hey, what happens when the, it's the woman doing that? We've addressed that before. Okay? We are to love our wives as our own selves. So when you are beating your wife, what does that say of you? I do not believe for a second that if you, okay, you're a saint and you got someone who claims to be a saint and they're beating the snot out of you and you are divorce them to get away, I don't think the Lord has any problem with that at all. But here's the thing. Once you do that, you're supposed to remain unmarried. And remember, saints, friends, polygamy is not favorable to the Lord. Okay? All right? Catholics will tell you don't, don't divorce at all. But your husband is like beating the snot out of you. You're a saint, but yet your husband, you know, couldn't watch his basketball game or comes home and he takes it out on you. And the Catholic, the Jesuit, no, stay with him. He's beating the snot out of him. Stay with him. You're a sin. Uh, no. That is not loving um, your own flesh. What does that say of you? If you're beating your spouse, claim to be a saint, okay? He who loves his wife loves himself. And the wife is to reverence her husband and is to submit unto the husband. Men take that a little too far. We talk about that in the marriage video. The marriage video will be the number one video in the description box for you, okay? Okay? But, um, in that case, you are not honoring your spouse as yourself. I do not think at all that the Lord would mind or has a problem with you leaving your spouse who abuses you. But here's the thing. See, Let's say you get divorced and the one that you were married to dies. Then you're free. Okay, that's how I, you know, with me and my wife, okay, her two husbands before me, they're dead and in hell. Okay, she was freed from that. Okay, she was freed from that. Okay, uh, you get, you're, you're married and your husband is smacking you around. You divorce him and leave him. Which scripturally, I don't think the Lord would have a problem with that. You're supposed to remain unmarried until he dies. But I want to get... You shouldn't have married him. See, and that's the thing. See, when you make the mistake and get yoked with someone you shouldn't, as a saint, unless you're cheating, unless you were both lost, and then you got saved, okay, or if there's physical violence, okay, but if none of that's there, but you're just married to someone who you shouldn't have been married to, and those three things aren't there at all. You're stuck. Well, no, I'm not. You're right. All things are lawful to, uh, for you, but um, then you get into the trap and the dangers of, you know, well, you're divorced and then you're going to, like, you're, you're still married and then you're dating someone else. I'd love, brother, I'd love to hear her um, reasoning and you know who you are uh, talking about, you know, our brother who I went and saw uh, down south, okay? 
Uh, I'd love to, I still would love to hear how she gets through that one. Okay? Yeah, so would you. <laughs> okay? That's why marriage is so serious. But see, in America especially, the disposable nature of divorce, they get married for the, like, Samson, Dundahead. And then they find out that they're unequally yoked. Well, if you're a saint, if there's no adultery, you were, if you were, you know, uh, if you were both lost, got married, you got saved, she wants to go or he wants to go, uh, that or physical violence, if those ain't there... As a saint, there's no scriptural grounds for you to put her away. Remember, 1 Corinthians 7 does not give credence for a saint to knowingly go and marry, some, marry a lost person. Doesn't. Period. You're stuck. You've made your bed and you have to deal with it. You need to be so careful with what you want to do. And you really need to be careful. Because that's a price. Look what happened to Samson, huh? That was a price that cost him everything. But he's in heaven. First Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians 4. Wherefore come out from among them, verse 17 in 2 Corinthians 6. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 8. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 8. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, ye, should more, ye would, would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Uh, fornication and adultery video will be in the uh, description box where we talk about this, okay? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother, and who is my brother, in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called you, called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And Tom, that one idiot, is like, holiness garbage? No, your garbage and the God and gospel that you serve and promote is garbage, you wicked free grace devil. Holiness garbage? The Lord rebuke you, Tom, you wicked scum, calling holiness garbage? <laughs> but he has not called us unto uncleanness. Free grace, sir. Sin! Hey, the more you sin, the more grace you have. We're not bound under any law, but we're under grace. So live it up. Contrary to scripture right there. He therefore that despiseth, being separate than, other than, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And we already covered that. <laughs> Proverbs. One. Oh, 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 but, oh, 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 but before we read Proverbs 1, uh, like the, the, the notorious, disgusting, vomitous, vile, free grace adherent does, you know what they do? Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware, 
lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. 10 on verse 19. Proverbs 1, 10 on verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. Beware, philosophy and vain deceit. After the rudiments of the world. A little doesn't hurt. Come on. You're being too extreme. We shall fill all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let us swallow them up alive as a grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. Hey, you only live once, right? I gotta put that in the description box. YOLO. You're stupid. Yeah, you only live a. Uh, you only live once in this flesh, but your spirit and soul are eternal. Anyway, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Come out from amongst them and be separate, saith the Lord. Okay? Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Greedy of gain. They want their cake and eat it too. Then they go to Christianity. God loves you. And just believe and receive. And there you go. Verse 18. We're almost done. And I, in and, and 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18. And, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Verses 1 on verse 15. Behold, the, Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. This is under the law. We're reading this for instruction in righteousness. There are those who deceive themselves, well, I am so bad I can't be saved. Oh, today that is not the truth. Murder can't keep you from salvation. Sodomy can't keep you from salvation. Adultery can't keep you from salvation. You keep yourself. Because remember, it's not at gunpoint. But he has called a specific way where you have to deal with your self-righteousness which the atheists don't like because they are their own gods. Which the Christians don't like because they are their own God. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth falsehood. They trust in vanity. Disbelieve and receive. Eat the cookie. I speak with tongues. I'm black. Meaning, you know, black Hebrew Israelites. Calvinism. I'm at the phallus house every time the doors are open. <coughs> None call for justice, 
nor any he pleadeth for a truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. The webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hand. Their feet run to evil. <laughs> Do you receive? Yeah. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Free grace people, they all they do is think of how they can justify sin. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace, they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Well, the place... Go to your Romans chapter 3 before the, uh, before the thing that you like to obscure with not taking the whole context there, sweet, sweet pie. Romans 3, <laughs> verse 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That includes you, that includes me. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That includes you, that includes me. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are as swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 8 in Isaiah 59 again. The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment in their goings. We're not even under the morality of the law. <laughs> Good luck. They have made them crooked paths. They have made them crooked paths. This is how I define it. Okay. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. By the way, context, this is talking about when Israel, during the time of Jacob's trouble, will come to realize we messed it up when they see the son of perdition standing in the third rebuilt temple. And amen, brother, uh, there is no scriptural evidence that the third temple gets destroyed. More on that in another video in the future. But uh, this is referring on to when Israel, admitting, okay, we were wrong, okay, the saints, you know, who trusted in the scriptures, they were telling us all along, okay? We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We, str we stumble at noonday as in the night. We are desolate, we are in desolate places as dead men, dead in trespasses and sin, have no eyes. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. If you do what God said not to do, press that red button, then your eyes will be open, but yet you don't have real eyes to see. We roar all like bears and mourn like doves, mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Again, this is talking about context, about when Israel realizes that they done messed up during the time of Jacob's trouble, and then they will return unto the Lord. Midway. You know, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will go into the third rebuilt temple and say, I am. And then the Jews will be like, uh-oh, we done messed up. They'll get it. Okay? In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, 
concerning uh, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. God knows my heart. And judgment is turned away backward. Backward. And justice standeth far off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Today, in this dispensation, which began with the death of the testator, I, uh, there's this one wicked guy that I commented on my other channel I used to comment it because of what I was doing over there. Um, he, uh, I asked him when did the New Testament begin. He said, with the cross, but then he goes and said, it was always that way from the beginning. Ah. Ah. So he, he starts to go in the right direction. Well, it began with the cross. The cross. What is the cross? Death, burial, and resurrection. The New Testament began with the te death of the testator, but then he adds, well, it was be ordained from the beginning. And I didn't ask, you know, well, what must one do to be saved today? You know, and I asked him, it's like, how were they made right in the Garden of Eden? He didn't answer that one. But he did with that the cross, you know, it was for ordained from the foundation before the foundation of the world. So what does that mean? He's saying, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> you, you wicked, antinomianist, free grace theology devils, man. Oh, so subtle. At least Jack, he's up front about it. That guy's an idiot. <laughs> he's up front about it at least he's a devil going to hell but anyway yeah. first John chapter 1 today in this dispensation see after we get redeemed the body of Christ and the time of Jacob's trouble that comes after this dispensation you take that mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead you're doomed you're going to hell no ifs, ands, or buts. But this antinomianist ecumenical bridge gospel of just believe and receive is going to be there prevalent. Remember, the law is going to be reinstituted uh, for a time there in a way for the Hebraic Jews. But that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic uh, Jesus, I believe, he's going to be calling you guys Christians. What's the bridge? Anyone can believe. You take that mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, you're done. And you're going to be deceived by just believe and receive. In a dispensation where eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. But today, 1 John chapter 1, 6 under 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth, cleanseth us from all sin. The unpardonable sin today you don't have to worry about. Okay? You don't. Okay? There, you, you don't. Christ is present in the believer. He's not in Jerusalem sitting on a throne. Okay? Get that through your head. You don't have to worry about the unpardonable sin today. Okay? There isn't a sin that cannot be forgiven by the Lord. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble... When we get redeemed, the redemption of the purchased possession, this dispensation by His grace through our faith ends and the time of Jacob's trouble begins, which is a reverting back to a form of faith and works. Form because I say it is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection, bloodshed, and crosses are already there. 
but a form of the law is going to be reinstituted. Okay? It's going to be faith and works. You've got to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ during the time of Jacob's trouble. And if you take that mark, you're gone. You're going to hell. No oopsies. Today, there ain't a sin that cannot be forgiven. No matter what sodomite Steve Anderson will have you to believe, no matter even the free graces will have you to believe, or the Catholics, okay? And atheists, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. I don't believe in sin. <laughs> Good for you. I, I don't think I'm a sinner. <laughs> okay. All right. Good for you. If we confess our sins, and they, 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 Christians don't like that, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. I'm a Christian who doesn't sin anymore. So you're calling Paul a liar. You're calling God a liar. And you're calling yourself God. Because God doesn't sin. Yeah. Good luck. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. We looked at this for the benefit of you, you saints out there, who, uh, lon I, loneliness, come on, come on. I was a sodomite for many years, for the Lord saved me and got me out of that, okay? You don't want to be unequally yoked with someone. You'll regret it every day of your life, and if you're an actual saint, and you make that stupid decision, there's no adultery, okay? Where If you were both lost and got married and you got saved and they want to go, that's different. But if that's not there, if there's no physical violence, you're going to be stuck. You might say, well, no, I, I can get divorced. Yes, you can, but then you're supposed to remain divorced. And the only way you will be free is if the one that you got divorced from it dies. Don't do it. Don't do it. Look at me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I love you. I'm talking to you. You know who you are. Don't. You'll regret it every breath you take. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. I hope this will help some of you. I hope this will remind you that you aren't supposed to be a partaker with that. watching this if you do I love you please keep your servant in prayer need it had a bad night last night very bad night last night just hope it's quick that's all that's all I hope for I just hope it's quick brother Alexander B Hartley I gotta mail you I don't have the money to do that yet but I gotta mail you some stuff got one of those flash drive things that has all the information for the channels because when I go and you're still here you're the one you know go online and you know you guys ever see brother Alexander B Hartley um, uploading a video of himself on the channel that the Lord has given me know that I have gone home okay so thank you for watching if you do I love you and Lord willing we will see you in the next video bye bye